going on YouTube? Chop Seller here, and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing my Arcane Blood Mage build for Dragon Age Origins, specifically for a Nightmare difficulty run. Um, in the video I'm just going to go over uh, my attributes, why I allocated them the way that I, that I did. I'll go over my gear, and then I'm also going to go over some of the spells that I chose, um, and really kind of explain why I use the particular spells that I do. So I'm going to try to keep this video as brief as I can. Um, and then at the end of it, I am actually going to show you um, what it's like in real time to be doing this on Nightmare. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so for the attributes, um, as a mage, you just want to focus on magic and willpower just because magic, that's going to increase the potency of your spells. Willpower, that's going to build up your mana pool. But for being a blood mage, um, your mana pool, like willpower, it's going to be replaced by your health. So, as you can see, that's why I have such a high constitution. So, um, I only got to about 20-ish, somewhere in there, willpower, um, before I really wanted to start focusing on blood magic, just so that way I did have an active, uh, decent mana pool up until that point. Um, just because at the beginning of the game, you really don't want to focus on doing nothing but blood magic <laughs> just because you are quite squishy and your allies aren't going to have the best skills they may not have the best healing abilities things like that so i would recommend probably only getting to uh, about 20 ish willpower magic yeah i i would be i would encourage you all to try to get it as high as you can um, without sacrificing too much constitution um, just because this is going to increase the potency of your spells, like I said, and then constitution, just because we are swapping our mana pool for our health to be used in order to cast spells. So having a high constitution as a blood mage, absolutely what you need to do. Um, so let's actually, let's go to my equipment. Um, so as you can see, I'm wearing pretty heavy armor. So because I am, the second specialization that I chose was an arcane warrior. Um, that specialization allows you to use your magic stat and um, to satisfy like a strength requirement so you can wear heavier armors and weapons. So I am wearing just some pretty heavy armor just because I wanted to be a little bit more beefy, um, especially because I'm gonna be using my health um, to cast spells, so I don't want to go down too quick if I get rushed by like uh, melee based characters. So, your gear, it can really depend on, I guess, like what your preference is or just what you like, what you have. Um, if you can find this chest piece, I would highly recommend you wearing it just because of the passive that you get. So, you get an extra 15% extra to the healing effects received. Um, that's definitely going to be handy. Um, so, you'll see that once we. Uh, once we actually see this in action. My main weapon, uh, I don't have another weapon set. Uh, I just chose not to go with like a sword and shield. I just don't think it's too viable. Um, so I am just using a staff. It just gives me more spell power. And I believe basic attacks from staffs are not, um, like they, they can't miss. So I just figured that's a good thing to have, especially when I want to make the best use of my damage output. Now, last thing, I'll go over my accessories. The accessories that I have, um, kind of like with my armor pieces. It's really just up to your preference. Um, a lot of these I just have on. It's just going to give me, like you see, more spell power. Uh, more spell power. The Morgan's Ring, I, I just I can't find a better ring at this point. And then Life Giver, this is obviously a go-to for any kind of blood mage build, I'd say. I believe I found Life Giver um, in Orzammar at one of the vendors. So it gives me more health. Um, during combat gives me plus 10 constitution, which is great. More armor and then plus 20% to the healing effects received. So that paired with my chest piece, I get an extra 35% healing effects received, which is pretty good. The only thing to take note um, is just during when you have blood uh, magic activated, you, uh, you can't really be healed that well through conventional means, whether it be through potions um, as well as like healing um, spells from your allies. So just keep this in mind that if you're ever going to be specifically healed by an ally of yours or you want to drink a potion, take off blood magic so that way you'll get you'll reap the full benefits of that healing ability. Okay. Alright, so to finish out, we're just going to go to spells. Um, skills, take them or leave them. It's really up to your preference. Uh, I don't have really an opinion here or there about it. So I did max out the mage tree um, because I wanted to get arcane mastery just as a passive so it gives me more permanent bonus to spell power, so just that's good for my any kind of mage build I find. For Arcane Warrior, I only selected this one 
um, combat magic. Even if you don't have it activated, like I said, you can use your magic attribute to satisfy the strength requirement to equip um, your weapons and armor. So I just found that to be incredibly helpful, even though I don't use it, just so I can put on heavy, uh, heavier gear. Okay, Blood Mage Tree. This is obviously the first one. That's just your uh, the mode that you go into, so that way you'll start using your health instead of mana for, to cast your spells. Um, the out of the three that you see that I picked out here, I would only recommend you picking up two. So being Blood Sacrifice and Blood Wound, um, Blood Control. It, it's I don't know. It's cool to use in theory, but I just I haven't used it enough to really make use of it. So I would recommend don't pick this up. Okay. But Blood Sacrifice, this is a way that you can avoid the healing uh, negated effects from Blood Magic. So you're basically just going to steal health from one of your allies. I always tend to steal health um, if I do this from one of my fellow mages that are in the back or like an archer just because they're not going to be typically targeted by an enemy and they'll usually have a lot more health than my tank. So um, I, I do use this here and there. Just in case I want to stay within, you know, uh, having blood magic still activated in case I want to pump out another, like, one of these specific uh, abilities. But blood wound, this is really the bread and butter of my blood mage build. Um, so blood wound is a large AoE um, that acts as a damage over time and a crowd control ability. So if it passes the resistance check, it will stun all the enemies in the area They'll take continuous damage over time, and also another good thing about this, um, I don't think it costs that much. Um, it says activation is 60, but I, I don't think that it really takes a whole heck of a lot of health away from me. So, And obviously, you're going to see this in, in, in real time. So, uh, I pick up rock armor, eh, it's just good, it gives you more armor. Uh, stone fist, that's just a decent attack. Lightning, uh, I do pick up all these. Um, the Tempest, that's pretty decent, you know, as long as you don't have allies in the area, just because it does have friendly fire um, to anybody that walks in the large AoE. But Chain Lightning, I think this one's pretty decent. Um, the only thing about this is that it has a large charge up time, and you really don't want to use this unless there's a large group of enemies, just because it'll take a little bit of time to charge up. Once it's completed and it shoots out that lightning bolt, it then basically ricochets to all the different enemies within the area. So it, it can pump out a decent amount of damage. I do pick up heal, just in case I need to use it on myself or an ally. Um, for entropy, I do go with all the hexes, just because this is a good way I found to take down larger enemies or to really negate um, damage um, from any of the mages that I've encountered. And then I do pick up um, Drain Life. I just feel like that's a, that's a decent um, skill to have. Death Magic, I do use that. Um, I toggle it on and off just so that way when enemies die around me, um, I can just, you know, take their life from the dead bodies just to, so that way I don't have to worry about always constantly healing myself through another uh, ability. And then Curse of Mortality, I, I find this one is very, very important just because it doesn't allow the enemy to heal uh, regenerate health and they take damage over time so definitely good against going up against uh, like other mages you know because they can be a real pain in the butt so okay but in short that was just my build that was the spells that I have the attributes my gear that kind of stuff um, and now we're actually just gonna jump right into it um, so just give me one second and we will be going into battle real time so I can show you just how viable this build is on nightmare Okay, so now we're actually going to see this in real time. Um, at this point in the campaign, depending on how you play your cards or just who you align yourself with, you may have more allies in this encounter. But as you can see at the top right of uh, my mini-map, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of red. So um, this can be very difficult. Um, so we're hopefully going to be showing off um, as many of the blood magic abilities as well as good synergies with them to make best use of the crowd control um, that you get from this type of build. So as you see at the bottom right um, it has my three sustained abilities which is rock armor, arcane shield as well as blood magic. So rock armor and arcane shield they're both defensive in nature so we're just gonna leave them on so we can be a little bit more tanky. Um, 
but since we already have blood magic activated, we are just going to go ahead and we're going to do blood wound. So like I said in the first half of the video, this is really going to be our bread and butter attack as a blood mage. It's a large AoE, crowd controlling ability, and it does damage over time. But the only other thing that makes this different than all the other AoE spells is that it does not damage your allies. Like there's no friendly fire on it, so you can just go ahead and cast this without fear of harming your allies. So we're going to do that. Uh, for Alistair, it looks like he's going to be putting on his sustained shield wall, but we're going to make sure we take this guy's attention so he doesn't attack our other mages and inter interrupt us. Ready. Looks like wins fine. Um, for Morgan, I believe there are two mages in here. There's one. Uh, oh, I saw him. There he is. There's the second. So we are actually going to put on, um, I believe... Affliction Hex. Let's do that one. Um, so this just reduces their resistances to cold, electric, fire, nature, and spirit. Um, so, you know, majority of our elemental damages are going to be much higher. So right now, Blood Wound, that is a spirit damaging attack. Um, and then the follow-up attack that I'm going to be doing is going to be electric. So hopefully uh, we're going to be able to take down as many of these enemies as possible just by using um, some really supportive um, casts as well from our allies. So we'll do that on with Morgan. Okay, cool. And it looks like it worked. We got him, and I think we got almost that whole group um, that is caught right now in Blood Wound, which is great. So as a follow-up, usually for Blood Wound, I end up using Chain Lightning um, just because it's a decent... Um, I guess you can call it, it's a single target DPS, but you never want to use this when out, unless there's like more than two enemies clustered together because this attack, it'll shoot off to your original intended target and then it's going to ricochet to all the enemies within the area. Um, so because Morgan just put on that Affliction Hex, it's going to reduce their elemental resistances. This is going to hit a lot harder. So we're going to do Chain Lightning. Unfortunately, it does have a large charge up time, as you can see. We must over, fight. Make sure our allies are okay. And it looks like that mage in the back. Mm, I can't seem to target that guy. All right, so we'll tell you what. As when we're gonna use Stone Fist to knock this mage down, because I think he's trying to heal them. Direct me. Let's do that. I can't seem to target that mage in the back. Darn. Sometimes I wish this had an over like top-down kind of view, but it looks like, alright, we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, let's just do Vulnerability Hex then on that mage with Morrigan, and then, there you go, it just cast, and you see all, <laughs> all the yellow getting popped up, and I think that mage actually died, which is great, that's exactly what we want. Alright, so then, you know, next target that we're going to focus on is going to be this mage so that way he can't heal his allies as well as he can't cast any kind of suppressive spell so we're going to curse him uh, excuse me we're going to do curse of mortality so it's going to stop this guy from being able to heal um, you need help? that's going to help us take him down a lot quicker and darn okay um, I guess let's have Alistair just attack that mage Done. your orders win. Sorry, that guy is stunned, which is good. Um, after she casts that, we'll have her just attack this guard just ready. to take him down. Um, looks like Morgan is attacking that guy. Let's continue to do that. Take him out now. Okay. Oh. Alright, so at this point... I would recommend just for your own safety, depend, also depending on how much health you have. I typically don't like to allow my health to get below 50% as a blood mage just because, you know, not only is it what's our life pool, but it's also what we use in terms of like being able to cast spells like mana. So um, for twofold, whenever I get below 50% or just at 50%, that's usually when I'll end up hitting blood sacrifice. Now looking at our allies, you know, the other two mages are kind of not, uh, I don't have the biggest health pool, but we're gonna go for Alistair. We're gonna steal some health from him. Um, all right, 
it only took 50 from him, but we got 85, which is great. Um, so now you've got a little bit over half of our health, and because we have regeneration on, which is one of the um, heal over time spells that you can see at the bottom right, we're actually going to take off blood magic just to make full use of that. So that way we don't negate the healing effects from that um, heal over time. And it looks like this enemy is going to be focusing on me now instead of our other casters, which is good. So we'll take that off. Let's steal this guy's life just to get some more health. Right. Alistair's still going to go after that guy, which is good. Right. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, he went down. I think another one of our allies actually attacked him. Um, I think Morgan might have done that. Um, so it looks like both the mages are down. Now we just got to focus on like Loghain as well as the rest of his guards. So um, yes. it should be much Got easier it. to contend with at this point. So let's see. Is blood? All right, it looks like Blood Wound is back up, so that's good. That's going to be what we're going to do again. Um, so now uh, we have to wait a little bit. That's fine. Um, let's go ahead and just attack some of the guys while we wait for Blood Wound to come back. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? Okay, so now... Um, blood magic should be back up. Over here, just to see if we can clump them because we have a couple of enemies following us. <laughs> uh, we're going to blood wound again. Get them all together, which is great. And now, let's see if I can with more again. Uh, I can't. She's. Is it time to kill something? Alright, you know what? We're just going to end up trying to cast. Um, chain, just kidding, it's not up yet, so that stinks. Um, we're gonna do Sha. Oh crap, no matter who I target, there's always gonna be a green I'm gonna get hit. Uh, we'll just go there, that's fine. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of enemies in this area, um, and it looks like we have more <laughs> allies than they do, so I'm not too worried. Alistair should be okay. Okay, Ready. let's pull it off. Okay. So at this point, uh, it looks like we're okay, and Alistair, we just need to get him to take um, Logan's attention off of All right. us. Where now? She'll bash there. We'll give Win a potion so she can he keep healing us, and then we should probably get Morgan out of this area. Uh, just because there's a lot of enemies right there. So yeah. we'll move her up. All right, we may just end up just keeping her they won't know what close hits to them. us. Okay. Yeah. Alright, now, like I said, before we are um, getting kind of low on health, and I don't want to drop too low. Um, so tell you what, we're going to take off blood magic, we're going to put on death magic, which will allow us to absorb the enemies that have fallen, we're going to get some health from them, just for a few of the time, um, so that way we don't have to keep stealing health from them, like Alistair, and these enemies. Um, just basic attacks. That's why also we have the heavy armor so we can sustain some melee attacks from a decent enemy like Logan. Alright, cool. Blood Wound is back up. So is Blood Magic, so we're going to take off Death Magic. We're going to put back on Blood Magic. And then we are going to do Blood Wound again. I'll get on it. And the just like names. that, friends, Stop. we are done. So well I hope that Agreed. you took uh, there be no further uh, some in good the tips from this video Alistair's just to see how right viable a blood mage and arcane is warrior in is. Both their specializations in, in Dragon Age Origins, specifically on a Nightmare will difficulty run. As always, yes. I appreciate you watching. My name is Chop Salary, and I will see you in the but next video. But it must video. be fought according right. to bye -bye. tradition. By strength.